Well, good morning. It's great to be here together. Great to see all you and loving all these babies. Uh, my name is Luis. If we haven't met, I, uh, I get to be the high school pastor around here, and I would hate to come up here and to brag, but um, I'm actually, I'm one of the luckiest people in this whole church because I get to have conversations all the time with young people in our church, both high schoolers and, and some of the volunteer leaders who are younger than me, but older than high schoolers. Um, and they're, they're in the stage of life where I, they, they want to follow Jesus, they want to get it right, their decisions have uh, real weight and consequences, and I get to have those conversations all the time. You guys afford me that privilege, um, and it's awesome um, to talk with these individuals. Um, that's actually uh, the approach to our entire youth ministry. So every, everything from the nursery through college age, um, n- none of it, uh, whether it's the nursery where my daughter is right now, grade school, middle school, high school, college, none of it is uh, programming to distract children so that the adults can do the real thing in here. Um, for us, it, we, we just don't think of it that way. Um, it is an opportunity to shepherd uh, individuals uh, in, de- in developmentally appropriate ways, uh, but to shepherd individuals, to help them uh, enter the story of God, uh, enter the community um, as they are, to meet them where they are. So two of those individuals are who you get to learn from today, and I have the privilege of introducing so um, we have Bella over here, who's going to come teach you guys here in just a bit, and then Jonah is going to follow up after that little two-part. Uh, but would you give them a hand and open, open, open your ears, open your hearts to what they have to say? Whew. I'm nervous, so I'd like to pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for today, and thank you for my voice that is not yet silenced by death. Thank you so much, Jesus, for making me a new creation and everyone in this room a new creation, Lord. Thank you for your peace. I'm just caught up in your presence right now, Lord, and I thank you that you bring rest. So thank you for this morning and thank you for the word you've put on my heart. I just pray that it touches the hearts of the people in this room. Amen. Cool. So (laughs) last week was Easter, right? And we celebrated so much, which is great, but that celebration continues. Why? Because the impact, the shock to the world that Jesus' death, the combined death, and his resurrection brought to the world is amazing, and it changes our reality, amen? So much so that we as humans, beings created in his image, we could be free of the consequences of sin and death because of Jesus, and we can step into a new reality because the old reality, it wasn't enough to separate us from sin, but Jesus is enough, and his power is enough. And when we talk about the power of God, we really have to put it in perspective sometimes because to say that God is powerful, we see that in scripture time and time again. But the resurrection power of Jesus and how we think about that in context of scripture, we can just compare it to our own capabilities and power. Because we look in Matthew 27, we see the the chief priests and the Pharisees coming before Pilate and they're asking Pilate, hey, we heard that Jesus was going to come back from the dead But we're actually really afraid of that. They wouldn't admit that to themselves, but they were. So they asked Pilate for guards, a way to secure this tomb, to try to hold Jesus back, to try to stop and stunt his resurrection power. But when we see what happens, we see that Pilate did grant him, grant them that that guard of soldiers to try to hold back the tomb. And they rolled this giant stone in front of his tomb. But what happened? Jesus' resurrection power won over. And that's the same thing for our lives and how we're created and we're this new creation. Sin and death can try to roll a giant stone in front of our lives, try to stop us, try to hold back the resurrection power of Jesus. But God's love always wins. Jesus always comes back and brings that revival. 
And so, in this new reality that we live in, through the power of Jesus Christ, we're called to no longer live in that grave. We can abandon it, we can say goodbye, and because we're adopted by God, he calls our name out of that grave. And there's that song I love, that worship song, he called my name, my name, in your name, and I can run out of that grave. I'm no longer held by the power of sin and death. And this is good news, right? This is great news. And part of this new reality, the blessings that come with it, are outlined in the book of Ephesians by Paul. And he's talking about the spiritual blessings of of Christ, saying that he, God, predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. And these blessings include how we're chosen and adopted, we're redeemed, brought near, and in Christ we can find a love that is wide, and high and deep and long. And when we can't control the ways of this world, guess what, we don't have to because through Jesus, God is bringing the entire universe into its fulfillment. And the way that we can respond to that, that new reality, is to receive. And that is good news because it takes the weight off the, of the world, off of the shoulders of shoulders that were never created to carry that weight. And we were created to bear the image of God. And that's not a heavy burden to bear when sin leaves the picture, and it does through Jesus. So this is such good news that it's the kind of news we can receive on a daily basis as a gift that we can look forward to each day. So imagine if you received good news in your life every day in those areas that you're struggling to have faith or have hope or have peace or have joy in. Every day we can receive the good news of Jesus' resurrection power and revival in our lives. We are free from sin and death. And in this way, I've learned that I need to be preaching the gospel to myself daily. Before I try to share it with anybody else, I need the good news in my life. I need change, and I need to recognize that I'm definitely not the only one who needs this good news. But the only way that I can urge others to embrace the love of Christ is if I embrace it for myself. And ultimately, when we embrace the love of Christ, we also embrace the way of life that Christ loves. And when we choose to receive this good news, our reality changes and our lives change. And I don't know about you, but I need change in my life, and I need it every day. And change, it isn't always easy to grasp, but it is easy to get to because it's freely given to us. Um, And this kind of change, the change in reality that Jesus' resurrection power brings is certainly a change worth embracing. But what does it mean to embrace the way of life that Christ loves, and what does it mean to recognize and respond to the good news? And those are questions that I'm gonna have Jonah answer. So thank you for letting me share. Okay, um, good morning. Like you heard, my name's Jonah. Um, I go to this, I've been going to this church for a long time. I serve in the high school group. I'm also on the maintenance team, so I'm around here a lot. If you wanna meet me, I'd love to meet you. Um, you guys have probably noticed that there's a lot of advice just out in the world. Um, and we're all trying to figure out what the best way forward is. Whether we're going to things like social media or self-help books, or personality tests like Enneagram, you'll notice that there's a common theme there. They're often gonna tell you to be who you're meant to be. When we look at our culture, it's one of our highest values. As we read further into the letter of Ephesians, Paul is gonna say something that sounds similar, but is actually completely different. Um, In light of what Bella just talked about, the profound love and grace that God has for us. Let's read this part of the text. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, 
you were taught regarding your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Instead, be made new in the attitude of your minds. Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. If you don't know me very well, I am someone that's not well known for putting a lot of effort or putting a lot of attention into my style. <laughs> my, my friends would probably tell you that I don't have any, and I would agree. So even a couple weeks ago, I was going to my cousin's track meet, and it's spring, so I was wearing a normal spring outfit of shorts and sandals. But what I met when I got there was a crazy hail and rainstorm, and I was soaked and wet and cold for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, the point of it being that the clothing I was wearing didn't make sense for the reality of the situation. It simply did not make sense for me to be wearing shorts and sandals in a hailstorm. Everyone knows inside and even outside the church that there are things Christians do and things Christians don't do. But I think it's less obvious to us why we do these things. And according to Paul, it's not because we're better than anyone or because we're trying to earn God's love or because we're maintaining appearances. Christians behave like we do because we live in that new reality that Bella was talking about that new reality of profound love and grace that God shows us through Jesus. And in this new reality, certain behaviors, and Paul will give examples like lying and stealing later on, they don't make sense anymore. They no longer fit. Certain behaviors start to look like wearing shorts in a hailstorm. The way Paul explains it, you take off your old self, this person that you used to be, before this reality, and you put on your new self, who you are in this new reality. And it's not something that we do once. Jesus teaches us to do this on a daily basis. Here's the thing. I don't know your life. I don't know everything you guys have gone through. But if you're like me, some old self behaviors are a lot harder to take off than others. Some are really difficult. Maybe for you, it's honesty. Maybe you have a hard time telling the truth to the people around you. Paul also will say not to sin when you're angry. Maybe for you, that's something that's become a challenge. Maybe it's something that has become so natural, it seems impossible to take off. But if we look at verse 24 again, it says, put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So even though it might seem unbelievably difficult, it is worth it. Because what Paul is telling us is that the new self is who we are meant to be. It's that thing that we're all chasing after. The way to be your true self is by putting on your new identity in Jesus. And I hope that's encouraging. Um, now we're gonna move on to baptisms and we get to see people and celebrate with them that are choosing to put on that new self. But before that, Mark is gonna come up and pray. Good job, Bella, Jonah, thank you so much for that. It's a wonderful word for us to hear. My name's Mark, and despite what Lou might have said, I actually have the best job here at the church. Um, all the middle schoolers would back me up on that. Um, and I knew Jonah when he would come to church as a middle schooler with no shoes on, so he's making progress. Um, one of the ways we always pray in middle school is just by opening our hands, so I'd invite everybody here and everybody online, if that's a posture that's meaningful for you as a sign of surrender, why don't we open up our hands? Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus, thank you for this wonderful reminder of the power of your death and resurrection, the wonderful reminder that what we need to do is receive, to continue to let go every day. Every time we mess up, Lord, every time we're imperfect, we open up our hands and we say, Jesus Christ, come and be king. So Lord, would that be our prayer as we go from this place today? 
And would you, in new ways, help us to see one another in the ways that we're growing? Just like I've seen Jonah start to wear shoes every day. Lord, would we also, as we, as we see people in this room and walk together through the years, say, hey, I remember when you used to have this habit, and now I'm seeing this habit, and I'm just so inspired by you and proud of you. Help us to encourage one another today, because it's today, and you say to encourage one another as long as it's called today. So we love you, Lord, and with open hands, we give up all the bad stuff, and we welcome all the good stuff that you have for us. We love you so much. And everybody said, amen. amen. Why don't we give an applaud to the Lord?